Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. A Cicero resident celebrates a major milestone on Friday as she celebrated her 100th birthday. The family and friends of Viola Francis says the centenarian has been a long-standing pillar of society and that they wish her happiness and good health for the rest of her day. Life can be such a fragile gift where many people are here today and gone tomorrow. But in some cases, some people hit the jackpot and live the equivalent of many lifetimes. This is the case with Cicero resident Viola Francis, who turned 100 on Friday. Francis was surrounded by loved ones as they helped her celebrate becoming a centenarian. Her daughter Leah George said it was a milestone that no one saw coming, but she was elated regardless. That's a great, um, we never believed that would happen, that would come, you know. But God, God is in control of everything, so we make us see how it is. And then, so we, that's why we are here to enjoy ourselves with her. In fact, um, we don't bound, not bound to be today. We just come here when, as long as we feel like, we just come and, and, and see her and do stuff for her. Grand-nephew of the centenarian Jason Hollingseed said his grand-aunt has been a pillar of society and that he has memories of her that he will never forget. Growing up in this community, I mean, she was sort of like, you know, a good shepherd, um, perfect example of, you know, a community, the, the um, proverb a community raising a child because, I mean, in terms of discipline, in terms of instilling pride, um, she was always there to ensure that, you know, that you always, you know, stand on your feet. And, you know, at times whenever we did stuff that was out of the way, she always came to our dad or came to our, our mother to report or um, seeing us along the way. She would discipline us. So, you know, she always instilled those sort of values in us. So today being uh, celebrating her one and Jeff birthday, you know, it is quite a milestone and we're very pleased to celebrate this day with her. Francis has survived numerous historic events, including World War II. The water and sewerage company, Wasco, teams up with strategic partners to form a plan to ease the woes of the populace, who are currently struggling through a dry spell. With the water supplies affected significantly, the company says they were well aware of the dry spell in advance. However, they are working around the clock to ensure a speedy supply of water to the masses. Wasco has met with strategic partners including the Fire Service, the Met Service, the Water Resource Management Authority and the Department of Forestry on the current dry spell. There are growing concerns about the impact that it will have on the country's water resources. Wasco's communications officer, Sherry Ann Gillard-Williams, says the public must play its part to conserve water. What we want to do right now is to push the message of conservation. So we want people to play an active part and play a role in terms of how much water that is available to them. So right now we can tell you that investing in a, a water tank and um, water storage containers is, is a wise investment. And um, of course it will redound to your own benefit. Also we want to let our customers know that Right now, we have completed the publication of a series of um, conservation tips. Um, that these are some public education messages that we want the, the public to really pay attention to. So they are currently on rotation um, in the, the local media and, of course, on our Facebook and other social media platforms. Gillard Williams says water must be used sparingly and actions must be thoughtful as it relates to water sources. It is the dry season. We know that the conditions are very hot and people are looking for um, rivers and um, beaches to, to you know take a dip in but we want to to implore people not to use the catchment areas as a, a liming spot or as a bathing spot because you can imagine the impacts that this could have on the amount of water that is available to us for treatment and then for onward distribution to customers we just wanted to ensure that our customers know the challenges that we are facing right now and that we all have a role to play in terms of how much water is available to sustain the, the population. 
If the dry spell is prolonged, we may see Wasco implement more stringent measures like water rationing. But so far, authorities say they are prepared to ride out this dry spell. Cookies, pastries and delicious treats can put a smile on just about anyone's face. In a random act of kindness carried out by the staff of Harbour Club, recipients at the Grosley Polyclinic were overwhelmed at receiving some tasty treats as a show of appreciation for their continued hard work for the betterment of the community. Solange Alfred tells us more. In celebration of the 100th anniversary of Hilton Hospitality, Harbour Club St. Lucia took on a random act of hospitality by surprising the deserving nurses, doctors, and general staff at the Grosely Polyclinic with special unique treats from their hotel. Harbour Club's marketing and PR specialist, Glenn Lake, says the initiative focuses on giving back to a worthy institution or person within any given sector. We chose the healthcare system and, of course, the Grosely Polyclinic because healthcare in St. Lucia is very understated with everything that is going on. Um, we tend to sometimes forget about them, but everybody gets sick, everybody has an emergency, and we believe that because of the close proximity to Harbour Club, they have assisted us in parts of emergencies, that we should give back to them. So we chose them and we gave them treats which are unique to Harbour Club. I mean, we have our 7th Heaven Swiss Bakery, so all of the treats came from there. Administrator of the Grosley Polyclinic, Sharon Joseph, accepted the gifts on behalf of staff of the Polyclinic, she says the well-received surprise is greatly appreciated and in a small and generous way will play a part in the staff's continued efforts at serving the St. Lucian public. I would like to thank the Hilton Club. This was rather a pleasant surprise. Um, as I said, we're happy to serve the community and the environment and we will continue to do our best to serve the people of St. Lucia. In honor of Hilton's 100th anniversary, Properties across all Hilton brands have chosen to show their communities that Hilton's hospitality extends beyond their properties. To do so, each hotel has participated in this random act of hospitality. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Alfred. Will you be ready when disaster strikes? Nemo is taking a proactive approach to sensitizing various sectors on disaster management. The public transportation sector says, with a high volume of the public relying on their service, the guidance in case of an emergency is a welcomed approach. More from Solange Alfred. The island is no stranger to the effects of climate change. In a bid to ensure all sectors of society understand and play their role during a disaster, Nemo conducted a disaster management training on Friday, 24th May. A key sector of society being public transportation, NCOPD President Godfrey Ferdinand says guidance outlined in the day's proceedings will provide the proper framework to govern the actions of the minibus sector during times of disaster. The sector is more looking at the protocol that works to when there is a disaster and when there isn't. Um, so, for example, if there is a disaster and there is the um, shutdown um, notification, we would wait for uh, somebody from NEMO responsible for transport to tell us that there is a shutdown and how should we go about using the protocol that we've learned. And after the, the shutdown, then we would receive a call again from NEMO to state um, when and where should the buses go. Moving forward, I think we will be having more discussion with NEMO in, and, and really having a detailed plan as well as a, a national plan when it comes to the public transport in, um, in reference to um, disasters. Furthermore, Ferdinand says before disaster strikes, the onus falls on minibus drivers to ensure their vehicles are not only in proper working order but also fully insured. He says forward futuristic thinking can also bring about new ideas and machinery to helping dealing with adverse weather conditions. Presently, some of the um, operators are now insuring the vehicles for um, water damage and, and, and flood and, and so forth. Before it was just mostly for accidents, but now it's for we're we insuring our vehicles for landslides and for, for storms or, or should I say flooding and, and so forth. I guess moving forward, um, speaking with NEMO as well with the government, we can um, look at a, a different type of bus or types of buses to deal with, with that kind of, of scenario. But um, 
at the end of the day, what we have now is um, the buses always would ply the routes that are safer to, to go by. And they, they are always in consultation with the police and, and persons, well, citizens also would tell them, oh, you cannot pass there and you can pass there. So there have always been a cooperative effort between the public and the uh, minibus sector in terms of how the route is operated after the, the, the stop. The NCOPT president says this continued effort between all key stakeholders should serve the island well to ensure a level of normalcy is returned as quickly as possible following any sort of disaster. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. St. Lucia Electrical Services Limited, Lucilec, wishes to advise its customers and the general public that its trouble call Northline 452-2165 will be unavailable on Sunday, May 26th from 8 to 10 a.m. During that time, calls can be directed to the Lucilec Trouble Call South Operator at 454-6617. The unavailability of the service is to facilitate necessary upgrade of the telephone system. The management of Lucilec deeply regrets any inconvenience which this may cause and wishes to thank customers for their patience and understanding. You're watching the Hot 7 Nightly News. Stay with us. We'll be right back.